graph theory is the mathematics that underlies network science. Um, you might think of network science as sort of a mashup of graph theory and statistics, or the application of graph theory to mathematical modeling using statistics, statistical analysis. Uh, regardless, this is our sort of fundamental playing field in network science. So what is a graph? A graph is just a set of objects together with a set of pairs of those objects. So I have an example over here on the right of a graph, the vertex set of this graph G, so V of G, A, B, C, D, E. So these are just labels for those objects. They may mean something in the context, but when we talk about a graph, we're sort of context free. We're just speaking uh, abstractly set of objects. Let's call them A, B, C, D, and E. Together with a set of pairs, which we call edges or links. So that's this edge set, and it's just a set of pairs of these. Now with a simple graph, and I'll talk about types of graphs in a second, with a simple graph, the order of the vertices in each pair doesn't matter. If I write A, B here, that's the same as writing B, A. It doesn't make a difference when we're talking about simple graphs. Um, so that's all a graph is, but it's really easily sort of visualized. A really convenient visualization for it is to draw a, a circle or a point for each one of the objects and to connect pairs of those objects with a line segment if they are uh, in the edge set. So here is uh, this graph G. Notice I have A, B, C, D, and E. Those are my objects, each one represented as a vertex. And now I look at my edge set and I can draw in these edges. So AB is an edge. That means I will find a line segment from A to B. So AB, we say they are adjacent if there's a edge between them, if they appear in the same edge. So that is A and B are adjacent. Let's see, D and A are adjacent. So I should see a line between D and A. There we go. Same with C, B, A, E, and D, C. So each of those edges. So we can draw it like this. This is a common way to draw a graph. A uh, big thing with graph theory is we don't care about the positions of these vertices. Like I said, a graph is just it's just the set together with a set of pairs. That implies nothing about position of the vertices, overlapping edges, we don't care about how it's actually drawn. There's lots of different drawings of the same graph. So just to illustrate that, here's G again, just drawn a little bit differently. Again, the edges are the same, A, B, D, A, C, B, a, E, and D, C. The edges and the vertices are the same in these two drawings. So they are the same graph. Uh, in a similar vein, and this is getting hopefully yeah, uh, a, little bit, a little bit into the weeds, but this idea of graph isomorphism. So even if I call these vertices something else, and therefore it does technically have a different set of vertices and therefore technically a different set of edges. Uh, in that sort of situation, we have different labels on the vertices. We call those graphs isomorphic. They're not identical, uh, but we'd still like to say that graphically, graph theoretically, we're looking at the same pattern of connections. So that is really what graph theory is about. It's about the pattern of connections between parts of a system. The system is the set of vertices, and the pattern of connections is the edges. It's an incredibly simple uh, object, a graph. It's a set together with a set of pairs. It's like really fundamental mathematical object. I, I think we could teach this in elementary schools. To get you know deeper into the weeds, we, we need a lot more mathematics to be built up and stuff, but at its heart, it is a very simple 
object, mathematically speaking, or, or a very foundational object, mathematically speaking, is perhaps the better word. It's foundational. Um, all right, so without rambling too much, uh, a few more terms I'd like to define here is the order of a, the order of a network. Uh, I need to change my, give me one second here. I think red doesn't show up super well, so I gotta make sure I'm right in, in, in black or, or blue maybe. Um, so the order of a graph is just the number of vertices in the, in the graph. So here we have one, two, three, four, five vertices, A, B, C, D, E, there's five of them. So this graph G, we would say has order five. That's the order of this graph. Uh, in, there's another set, right, that goes along with the graph. That's its set of edges. So how many edges are there? Also five, we call that the size of the graph. G has size five. Usually we let N be the order and M be the size. That's not strictly, we won't you know, necessarily always do that or that'll you know, differ between texts, but typically we let N stand for the order of a graph of a given graph and M be the size, so N and M. Uh, the number of edges that are incident with a particular vertex, the number of connections that a given vertex has, it's re is referred to as its degree. So I can go through each of these vertices and just compute, I guess, compute its degree, count its degree. So A here has one, two, three, Neighbors is another word for vertices that are adjacent to a given vertex. So A's neighbors are D, B, and E. It has three neighbors. So I could say A has degree three. Uh, we can write that a little bit more um, you know, using mathematical notation. I would say the degree of A, dag of A, is equal to three. And so I'll do that for the rest of these. You can check yourself. Let's see degree, just make sure you're understanding, a degree of, uh, of C here is two, it's got two neighbors, degree of E here is one, degree of B is two, and the degree of D is one. And notice if you do that down here, you'll get the same values because again, they're the same graph. So this is, right, the basic sort of mathematical um, the, the underpinnings of network science. So what do people mean when they say network? How is a network different from a graph? This is not standard among texts. There's debate about this. What exactly is meant by a network and how is that different from a graph? Here's my own take on it. A network is a graph together with context. If the vertices mean something, if they're not abstract anymore, like they are here, I don't know what A, B, C, D, and E are. They're abstract objects. They're just objects right now. They have no context to them. We're talking about a graph. If A, B, C, D, and E are people, and the edges represent friendship between those people, now we're in the realm of networks. Now I would call that a network. It's not super important to be able to differentiate these things, although I think it's helpful for understanding where network science comes from, uh, and in particular, how, how it comes from the graph theory. Graph is a mathematical object. A network has context to it. It's less abstract. So we'll see some examples of networks. Here's one. This is a network. Uh, you might also hear, you call this a graph model. And that's really what a network is. It means we're modeling something with a graph. So that's a network. In this case, we can see, oh, the color's a little bit weird. I'll have to fix that in the next video. Sorry about this little green background there. I'll fix that. Hopefully it's not too distracting right now. Um, but again, we see the same sort of fundamental thing going on uh, as was going on in, in the last example of the graph. We have vertices. These are the nodes, the circles. They're sized differently. I don't, I'll explain what, what's going on with that in a second, but nevertheless, there, there's nodes, and then some of those nodes are connected to each other uh, via edges. So this one is a much bigger 
uh, graph if we strip away the context. It's a much bigger graph. I don't know the order off the top of my head. Maybe I should know that. And the size uh, is much, much bigger. Uh, and then in, in the context, what we're actually looking at here is, a, uh, is the Western state's power grid. So this was based on, on some research that was done on the power grid of the Western United States. So that means the vertices represent something. What do they represent here? They're either generators or transformers. And how do I know to draw an edge between a generator, uh, between two generators or a generator and transformer or two transformers? Well, in this case, we're talking about physical uh, power lines between those transformers or generators. So someone took that data of what are all the generators and transformers, and then how are they connected via power lines? And they took all that information, and guess what? It, that's a set of vertices together with a set of edges. And then we can uh, draw that and visualize that network here. So this is definitely one thing we're going to learn to do in this class is to visualize um, a network using Gephi. So this is one that I did um, that I visualized. We'll find some different layout algorithms. You might be able to get a better drawing than, you know, than I've produced here. These are also colored. I chose to color this network, and this is another thing we'll learn how to do based on community detection. So I ran a community detection algorithm that you'll learn how to use as well. Uh, and I had to set some parameters and kind of figure out what's going to work for me here. What are, you know, I don't want too many communities. I want to just see uh, sort of functionally, are there communities that are cooperating more with each other than they are with the rest of the network? That's the idea behind communities. Are there more connections between these community nodes than there are between the communities or not? That's, that's the idea behind communities. So in this case, communities, the communities I found roughly correspond to geographical locations within the Western United States. Uh, I can't get any more specific about that because I don't have the data on specifically where they are. However, it's uh, a very reasonable conclusion to draw that these communities of nodes that I've detected here are going to correspond to geographical regions or subregions. And that conclusion is based on the context of the network here. We're talking about physical lines between power stations. Um, okay, so this is an example of a network. Here we have a network. Um, important things to keep in mind when describing a network. You need to know what do the vertices represent and how are the edges defined. We'll see a lot more examples as we go, but that's the two most fundamental things you need to communicate when you're describing a network.